My name is Jim Caseman, and we're going to be doing a series, and the subject is Biblical Faith. And of course, we're going to be uh, talking about many different things involving faith, and uh, so we'll get started with the basics first in defining faith. And without faith, it tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so we can't please God except by faith, and I suppose the, the answer to that is uh, pretty obvious. Uh, God, according to John 4, 24, God is spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So he's a spirit. In other words, he can't be seen. And yet, in the scriptures tell us that we are to have an intimate relationship with God. That's his will. And uh, But now we're talking about having an intimate relationship with, with someone that we can't even see. You know, it's tough enough when you're married as husband and wife, and you're both alive, of course. <laughs> and you can touch each other, look each other in the eye, hear each other, you know, in the natural realm with your five physical senses. That's a, it's still a difficult a task for, uh, for if you want a real intimate marriage. You know, you have to work at it. And uh, you don't, uh, it doesn't just happen accidentally. And it's the same with God, you know. It's something that doesn't just happen accidentally. There are things that we do to enable us to have that intimate relationship with God by faith. So, by faith. The Christian walk is by faith. Now, according to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, it tells us that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible as well. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the five physical senses. Wow. So, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence or the title deed of things not seen. All right. So, faith gives substance to those things that we're believing for. It's a title deed. In other words, if I wanted to purchase an island, let's say at the Bahamas, I've never, let's say, I've never been there, I've never seen anything, but there's these islands, individual islands that are for sale. And so I correspond, you know, via, you know, email or what have you, and I actually purchase it. I even get the title deed for it. Now, I haven't seen the island, I've paid for it, but it's out there, it exists, it's a reality. I've got the title deed. And so you and I, when it comes as believers, as Christians, you know, the entire Christian walk is by faith. And everything we believe for, we can't see it, but it does exist. It's just still in the spiritual realm, and faith brings it over into this physical realm where we can see it and touch it. And, uh, but meanwhile, we have the Word of God, and we know it exists. That's our title deed. And we just have to hold fast to the confession of our faith without wavering. And we will see the answer. Now, faith means that we are confident of what we hope for. Convinced of what we do not see is what the Moffat translation says. All right. So faith is present tense. And... Uh, Oh my goodness, I hope I didn't mess up my timer. Oh well, I'm still trying to work, work things out here, but we'll get going. This is still the first session. But anyway, faith is now. In other words, faith is present tense. Unbelief is tomorrow. So if, you, if, you don't, if you're not really in faith, you're really not believing, it's always going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow always is. There's always tomorrow. But faith is now. Present tense. We, have to, we believe we've received it now. 
before we see it, taste it, smell it, or touch it with our five physical senses. All right, so that's where we have to get our minds renewed. You know, we'll talk about it later, I suppose, but really, I need to mention it now, I think. You know, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, it says, I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. So we are a three-part being. I am a spirit. That's the real me. And I'm, I'm in this physical dimension, so I'm clothed with flesh so that I can work in this physical dimension. In other words, I, if I didn't have a physical body, I couldn't drive my car, my hand would go through the steering wheel, I wouldn't be able to set up the uh, iPad and what I'm recording with right now and everything else. I need physical hands and everything to deal with everything in this physical dimension. And so the real you and the real me, we are spirits clothed with flesh. And then we, as we pray your whole spirit, soul, and body, and we have a soul. And that's where the mind and the reasoning and the thinking is. The emotions are primarily in your heart, but the heart and the soul are connected together. And so it tells us, no, that we have to, well, I know that Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We'll talk about it in more detail later, but when, we get, when we're born again, I think most of you who are listening to me understand that, or maybe not. To be born again is when you ask Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and your Master. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit, John 3, 3, comes upon us, causes us we have to, to have our nature changed because before we're born again, we have the nature of sin, actually the nature of Satan. We belong to Satan's family. And then when we're born again, our nature is changed supernaturally. And now it takes on God's nature, the, God's, the nature of love. And now we're taken from the power of darkness, according to uh, Colossians 1.13, and transferred into the kingdom of the Son of his love. When you ask Jesus to come into your heart to be your Lord and your master, you switch families. You're no longer part of Satan's family. Now you're part of God's family. And now when you're born again, of course, then uh, you're a new creature in Christ, and now God comes to live inside of us. All right, so then, as born-again believers, then, we, our human spirit is changed. It no longer has the nature of sin, not has the nature of God, love. God is love. But our minds have not changed, and neither has our flesh. We still have sinful flesh that has death in it, and our minds are not renewed, they're still thinking like the world. So when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, your mind hasn't changed. And so then we need to change it. By what? Meditating on the Word of God, which we'll get into later. And through the Word of God, then we begin to what? As we begin to study the Word of God, we begin to think like Jesus does, we think like God does, and then we start talking like God does. We're getting our mind renewed. So that's, and then of course, Remember, it says, I beseech you, therefore, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Nothing changes in our physical body. Now that we're born again, we're a new creature in Christ Jesus, we have God's nature of love, but this physical body still is sinful flesh. It has death in it. Now, God needs our sinful bodies. Remember, he's a spirit. He has to have a physical body to work through. And God's physical body is the church made up of human spirits that are born again, they have his nature, but they all live in sinful flesh, which now we have to present holy to God. We have to, in other words, our flesh may want to do certain things and we say to it, flesh, no, we used to do those things before we were both Christians, but we don't do those things anymore. We're not yielding to that sinful temptation. So you get your mind renewed and you got to take control of your flesh. All right, well, that's a whole lot more than I thought we'd get into in the first session, but I think it's helpful. And so I see that my time is about up, so we'll be seeing you in the next session, and we'll continue from there. Meanwhile, just praise the Lord. <laughs>